Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Unfortunately, Doug could not make it this week as he has been kidnapped. Coming up, a new whale, some prehistoric cats, and Megalodon was big. Starting off the news is the incredible description of a new species of living whale from the Gulf of Mexico. It's been realised for a while now that certain whales living in this area likely represent a distinct lineage based on genetic data that has been gathered from them, but this paper is the first time that a skull from one of these whales has been examined morphologically, and it's been confirmed that they are indeed distinct from other medium-sized baleen whales. The new species is a member of the Brooders Whale Complex and has been named as Rice's Whale, Balenoptera ricei, and it's most closely related to Eden's Whale. It's just amazing that new cetacean species like this are still being discovered, and it's exciting to think about what may still be out there to find. Up next is an interesting publication on the pattern of crocodilian evolution and the driving forces behind it. Using a machine learning algorithm to estimate the rates of evolution of these animals in the past, it was found that they follow the pattern of punctuated equilibrium, with long periods of generally slow, stable evolution interrupted by brief moments of change. This is consistent with environmental factors being a driver of their evolution, and it seems as though it was during times when the environment was warmer that crocodilians were evolving at a faster rate and attaining larger body sizes, perhaps explaining why during the generally warmer Mesozoic there was a greater diversity of crocodilians than there are today. It also demonstrates the remarkable versatility of these animals, as their modern body plan has not had to change dramatically since the Jurassic, although the wide variety of other body plans that existed at this time are no longer around. Also in this week's news is a fantastic paper that has described an association of two subadult and one adult Smilodon fatalis, the infamous saber-toothed cat, from Pleistocene rocks in Ecuador. Amazingly, the fact that both the subadult individuals possessed a type of tooth only present in around 5% of this species population suggests that these cats were related to each other, most likely siblings, and that the adult found with them was probably their mother. The younger individuals were about two years old when they died, suggesting that Smilodon had prolonged parental care, and looking at their growth patterns the researchers were able to determine that they had a unique strategy for big cats, with a growth rate similar to tigers but an extended growth period like lions. So this amazing discovery has given us a fascinating glimpse into the social lives of one of prehistory's most iconic predators. And finally, more about the early life of iconic ancient carnivores as a study examining the growth of Megalodon has been published. Looking at incremental growth bands and fossilised vertebrae from a megalodon individual that was about 9.2 metres when it died, the researchers found this animal would have already been 2 metres long when it was born and lived to the age of 46. The large size of the animal at birth is similar to the case in other lamniform sharks, and indicates megalodon gave live birth, in addition to it being likely that the embryonic sharks would have grown inside their mothers by feeding on unhatched eggs in the uterus, like certain living sharks do. The study also calculated that Megalodon could probably have lived to between at least 88 and 100 years old. So, some absolutely amazing discoveries about another fearsome predator. Well, that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, myself and Doug, before he was kidnapped, were interviewed recently along with several other paleontology YouTubers by the Zoologicals. It was great fun to be a part of this, so if you want to get to know me and Doug a bit better, head on over to the video, and be sure to subscribe to the Zoologicals as well, it's a brilliant channel. Back to Doug in the...